Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Air Speed Prime here at my next Transformers Prime Beast Hunters episode review. And this week I'm going to be reviewing the episode that aired yesterday, uh, which was uh, 309, obviously episode 9 of season 3, and it was titled Evolution. Now, overall, I thought this was a really good episode once again. Completely different to the last episode in that, like, what the, while the last episode had, like, aspects that linked into plot threads going forward, it got away from the Predacon plot. This one got right back into it and really set up the kind of end game, I think, of the show. So, um, very impressed with it. It did a lot with the main plot, but also kept a lot of the character stuff with the Autobots, the Decepticons going forward, and a ton of other references as well. I think it says a lot that I actually had to take notes for this episode just because there were so many little things. Last few episodes, I haven't really taken many notes, but this I have a ton of notes. So, um, uh, I'll start off with the opening scene because um, that's a pretty important one. Uh, obviously, it's it's a reference to Rock Bottom, I think, when Starscream disappointed Megatron before, and Megatron was basically going to kill him in the kind of cave in Rock Bottom. Um, and that's a reference to what happens here. Obviously, Starscream's groveling before Megatron. But Megatron just rolls his eyes, which I thought was a really nice moment, and one of those kind of fun things the writers and uh, animators are doing uh, in this season of the show. Like, Megatron just doesn't turn around, he rolls his eyes and turns around, because it's just like, Starscream, stop doing this. And it turns out that they're there in Shockwave's secret lab, where the whole Project Predacon has been going on, and um, the, we have confirmation that you know it's three days to readiness and stuff like this. But, then Predaking shows up. He sees Knockout going down the kind of uh, uh, lift thing down into the cave. And follows him down and then Starstream just smacks Predacon with a bar a bit. And then Predacon's, uh, Predaking transforms out of nowhere. And I thought that was like, wow, they're just straight up going for it. Um, uh, a slight negative maybe for the episode was that Predaking's voice, I thought, was... Um, slightly unfitting of the character um i i get i sort of get what they were going for you know to quite a regal voice you know he's quite a king they kind of gave him like a king's voice so um i'll maybe get it more going forward depending on what Pred Pred King does going forward but um uh, it was a bit in, a bit uh, kind of awkward i think at the start just like hearing that voice come out of that kind of character model but uh, it, it it was fine in the end um uh, they obviously then they brought synth end down with them synthetic energy on knockout had a ton of it so they were clearly going to use that I suppose to fuel the Predacon army which was interesting in itself given how synth ends also being set up with the Autobots and that Ratchet's still working on it and is kind of gradually perfecting it I think so um, that's another interesting kind of a uh, slight plot going forward and um, I love the shock of um everyone when Predaking transformed that like it was just like the audience the Decepticons had that reaction where like did he just transform and even Shockwave wasn't sure but kind of explained it in that um, as far as they knew the Predaking the Predacons never evolved enough to or like lasted long enough to see any of them ever transform so that makes Predaking quite unique in that he appears to be the first Predacon to ever transform and he's all kind of prepared to um basically take command of the Predacons and like lead them for Megatron and um, which was interesting that, that they've clearly set him up as a very intelligent character now and I, I liked his explanation, Predaking's explanation of like how this happened and like there's kind of a hint of like accelerated growth in the cloning process and that initially he was just this kind of mindless beast but as the kind of cloning acceleration growth took place that he gradually developed these kind of um more sentience and stuff like that, learning to transform, that sort of thing, and um, that was that was um, very interesting to me at the start, and then the, the, continuing on the Decepticons side of the episode, um, the Decepticons immediately, and this was quite a bit of a shock came into play for me, in that the Decepticons immediately are like, okay, with this guy in charge of the Predacons, I don't trust them at all, so we're going to be Decepticons, and deceive them before they can like deceive us. And I thought that was brilliant for the Decepticons, adding an extra plot that I wasn't expecting at this point. And they just flat out decide that Predaking in control of all these um, potential Predacons is too much of a threat and decide to come up with a plan to get rid of him. 
And this is where, um, if you've watched my other reviews, you've probably seen that um, um, one of my complaints maybe about this season, which I've been very positive on, has been maybe that Starscream hasn't been treated very seriously at all as a kind of threat. Like, why is he, like, pretty high up in the Decepticon command when he's not, when he's treated as a joke most of the time? So, I love that he was the one to come up with this plan, and the sinisterness of the delivery was perfect there, in that he basically sets it up that it doesn't have to be us that does it. We can just, like, basically tell the Autobots, kind of, by accident, where it is and allow them to do it. And maybe Predaking will take out the Autobots in the process and kill two birds with one stone. That was a perfect idea, and Megatron was just like, kind of looking at him like, I hate you, Starscream, but that was a good plan, <laughs> that, that sort of a look. So that was, um, that was really nice, I thought. Um, but um, going, going on from there, I suppose that, for me, the highlight of this episode was um, Ultra Magnus. Um, I, this was completely unexpected to me, in the amount of development he'd get in this episode. So, um, obviously the start of the episode is um, interesting that they've obviously just come back from patrolling some areas looking for Predacon bones, and he's like, why aren't you patrolling the next one? And they're like, well, Optimus usually gives us a break, we're kind of putting in our field reports here, and he's kind of like, <laughs> like really awkward with them, just like, they really don't like my command style. And then Optimus, uh, well, Wheeljack comes back, and he's a bit shocked that Wheeljack has actually done something for him, and they're like tuning up his ship. Um, and then Optimus comes in and they all flock over to him because he's not just the head commander, that's not what they flock over to him because he's their friend, he's part of the family. And we get a really nice moment I think here when um, Optimus is basically telling like what happens, you know, like, I think Megatron's gonna do the cloning process and he looks over and he sees Magnus off on his own and kind of sees the pro problem within the group. I will say that when I first watched this because of the, the look on Prime's face, because of what he was saying, what he paused with saying as he looked over, I thought the show was kind of hinting that Ultra Magnus was a clone of Optimus. Just because of the kind of look on his face, the kind of like realization thing, and he's like, clone, and he looks over there. And for a second I was like, are they suggesting that Magnus is a clone of Optimus? But then the next scene obviously <laughs> happened and like, tossed that out the window, but it, it was a bit, a bit of an odd one in that I, I haven't seen anyone else see, um, say that they thought that, but uh, it was just really weird. And um, obviously the next one kind of proved that wrong, and it's just that he sees that Magnus is not a part of the group, he's not a part of Team Prime, he's one of the officers that happens to be with the rest of Team Prime. And he brings that up to him, like, what's wrong? And for Magnus he just sees it as my command doesn't seem to be going well with the troops, they now have high morale. And Optimus is about to basically tell him that you know, this is not a military unit. You know, while, you know, while it is a military unit, there, this is something stronger than that. And he was about to say family, but he didn't get the chance. So it allowed, kind of, I think, Magnus to develop a little bit over the course of um, the episode. But he kind of has that in his mind since he asks us at the very end. Um, but... Um, yeah, um, I'll come back to that later on, um, with the kind of end scenes with Magnus. But uh, they, they obviously um, head out there, and um, they find some Energon which was left there, um, which it was initially what attracted them there. They then discover the mine and stuff like that. And Optimus basically splits them up. You know, Wreckers go in there, Stealth Team, which is basically the original kind of other members of Team Prime, bring the Energon into the base. And um, what I liked here was a very, the one kind of thing that Smokescreen kind of does in the episode, in that he asks to go with the Wreckers, because that's the tougher mission, and with Smokescreen's thing this season of wanting, wanting to be um, respected a bit more, because he was going to be the Prime if he didn't save Optimus instead, he kind of wants to prove himself to be a bit of a leader, so he goes on the more um, important mission. Um, and stuff like that. So that's just a very small thing that I really liked in the episode, and that there was almost no need to have Smokescreen say that line in the episode, since he wasn't going to play a big role, but they just put it in there to show that he's wanting to kind of get a bigger role in the Autobots, which I quite liked. Um, uh, another thing I said, obviously I mentioned there, uh, Ultra Magnus asking Ratchet about the um, synthetic energon and what the progress is like. 
But along with that, Ratchet also, for the, I think, third or fourth time this season, said that they don't have much equipment, which comes into play at the end as well. So, um, that was nice. But anyway, Ultra Magnus and Wheeljack, of course, are the two to get paired up as um, Bulkhead and Smokescreen go the other way. And uh, they, they're the ones to discover the lab with all the clones in it. And um, <laughs> obviously, th this is where you get the moment where uh, Starscream has actually set up Shockwave to be killed in this moment, in that. Shockwave knew about the plan, but he wasn't expecting it to happen here, so... Again, little moment of them setting up the fact that Shockwave and Starscream don't have this best relationship. There's a big rivalry between those two. And this was Starscream's attempt to kind of get um, Shockwave killed, but I suppose not get in trouble for an obvious attempt on his life. So um, that was a nice moment as well. Um, then... Uh, the the develop the interaction between Magnus and Wheeljack throughout the episode was was quite interesting that there was a level of respect I think that wasn't there maybe in the last episode and that Magnus was shocked that Wheeljack after after learning from R C in the episode um, plus one um, did something nice for Magnus kind of realized that he has to kind of be more friendly part of the group so that last episode the, not, not the last episode before last was kind of Wheeljack becoming family team prime. This one's about Magnus becoming family team prime. So you had Wheeljack do that nice thing, like kind of tuning up Magnus' ship. And he's also more willing to follow Magnus' orders here. He kind of like, um, they're really quiet going up. He kind of stays behind Magnus, lets Magnus lead. When he asks, he asks Magnus if he can um, throw the grenade and then Magnus kind of gives him a bit of a leeway and is just like, okay, it's a confined space, but do it, you know, we've got to do this, and they escape, and then, then of course there's the epic, epic fight scene, which is definitely one of the best and probably the most, like, extended fight scenes that we've got in the whole series, not just this season, so, um, that was really, it was really well done in terms of the teamwork, they, the two developed their kind of friendship, not just in talking to each other and stuff like that, but in action on the battlefield, doing lots of dual kind of team moves with the the forge and the uh, wheel jacks kind of relic the kind of a uh, electro whip thing there were some really clever moments in the fight and what i really liked was that the two of them together working together actually kind of got the better of Greta King. they weren't damaging him like incredibly like but they but they probably may, may have captured him if Greta King didn't like fully fight back but um and then you just show what it really had i think for me was the level of danger for wheeljack and magnus because they were kind of two minor characters and um, magnus just introduced this season um wheeljack coming into the main kind of picture this season you kind of did fear for them a bit they could be killed in this episode so when predaking was fighting back and was clearly stronger than one of them on their own you really did fear for him and especially the moment near the end of the fight where he just snaps the forge in half and is basically about to kill Magnus before um, uh, Optimus comes in. You really thought they were gonna, he was going to kill him. But what does happen is um, Predaking basically um, smashes off um, Ultra Magnus' uh, right hand, I think. Pretty much all of it, uh, except a tiny little bit at the bottom of his hand. And that was quite um, interesting that the Autobots haven't really had that that sort of an injury. You know, RC has, I think, been stabbed once. Obviously, Prime had the huge injuries. Uh, Bulkhead had the nearly being paralyzed thing. But this kind of, like, loss of a kind of limb kind of thing, that hasn't really happened to them. Um, I think uh, we've had Starscream lose an arm, but he got it repaired. But this was played up as really kind of like a hero losing a limb, and he's not going to get it back. Uh, so that was interesting. And he was, he was in, like, pain because of it as well, so... It was made kind of quite a like um, intense because of that. And Ma uh, Optimus comes in and with the jetpack manages to get the two of them out and um, stuff like that. But um, then we come to the final scene. I think uh, I have a few other points, but I'll just go to the final scene now. And um, I really liked it. Obviously, Ultra Magnus wakes up, looks at his hand and sees that it's gone, and it's kind of like he's not like super upset. He kind of has that warrior's thing, like oh, I've lost a hand, but. I'm still alive, and he kind of looks and sees everyone 
at looking at him. Even Optimus and all the other crew are there, kind of watching him, watching over him. And it's a bit of a shock to Magnus because you get the sense that if someone else was injured, he wouldn't be like right there. He'd probably be doing something else. But then Optimus explains to him that like well, Ultra Magnus actually asks him the question. It shows kind of how much he's been thinking about what Optimus was going to say earlier on in the episode. You know, what is kind of more powerful than a kind of strong military unit? And Optimus is just like, something I learned from the humans. Family. And you see the, all of the Autobots come closer and surround him because as much as he's kind of not quite in the family yet, they've embraced him. And it was a really nice moment and this kind of like nice emotional thread throughout the episode. Magnus learning to be not just the military commander and it was really well done i think um, and i look forward to seeing where magnus goes from here now that he kind of understands team prime more is his command style going to change a bit is he going to give more leeway to like wheeljack and stuff like that um, it's going to be really w interesting to see where magnus goes um just looking through my notes here what else do i have um I, I'm pretty sure that's everything I have here, actually. Um, as I said, overall, a really good episode. There's some. Um, my favorite part was definitely the Ultra Magnus character development. Bit of Wheeljack development. Um, Love the Decepticons kind of deceive, trying to deceive Predaking and stuff like that. So that's another plot going forward. Like, is he ever going to find out that they were kind of behind all this? They let the Autobots know. Um, Maybe one thing is that, where does it kind of leave the series? Where does this leave the series? They, they set up Project Predacon a lot. We know this season is called Beast Hunters. The hunt for the Predacon bones seems to be over for the most part. Project Predacon's over. Where is the season going now? Is it just the Decepticons plus Predaking against the Autobots and kind of final battle over the last few episodes? Or is there something more being set up? Like with the actually there is one part of the episode i forgot to mention the big the big ending i can't believe i forgot about it um cybertronian cyber matter after the explosion in the predacon lab um shockwave basically explains it that um cybernucleic acid and synth then basically combined in this explosion to create cybertron and cyber matter which basically makes up from my from what i got makes up the surface of cybertron it's like something making Earth or so, on, on planet Earth. So there's a kind of hint that, oh, is this how they're maybe going to restore Cybertron? Or is are they going to use their supply of synth then to create another fortress or something like that? Um, it's an interesting setup, I think, because it's, it's a mystery, but you don't really know enough to kind of go on it. It's just like, hmm, what is this? Um... There is a hint that maybe the f the the forge kind of when it shattered kind of where it shattered like splintered off into kind of gold and crystals that maybe the forge is responsible for this in some way as well and that those crystals in the explosion maybe created something because that's what the forge does I'm not really sure it's a nice mystery that leaves the speculation very open and that there's not a whole lot to go on but I liked what it was as I said nice ultra magnus development Nice stuff, like maybe with like little things with smoke screen. Predaking was very was interesting. Um, we got a like a lot of character development for him in this episode, but I'm interested to see where he goes from here. He's obviously very angry at the Autobots, but is he ever going to find out that the Decepticons played him and that sort of stuff? So, overall, excellent episode in my opinion. Um, thanks for watching this review and bye.